Good morning. My name is Yaki Silia, and I'm going to speak to you about Fate of the Nation, Three Scenarios for South Africa's Future, a book recently published by Jonathan Ball and available at all good bookstores. In summary, the content of uh, Fate of the Nation is the story of President Jacob Zuma's rise to power, what happened with the RDP and GEAR, uh, how we turned to China, and the subsequent policy confusion that we've seen in South Africa in recent years. So it sets out election trends, and for that I divide the ANC between a traditionalist grouping, a reformist grouping, and the large portion of ANC supporters that are not voting, the so-called swing vote. And they will be absolutely critical for the future of South Africa. The book includes a forecast of the outcomes for the ANC, the Democratic Alliance and the EFF for the 2019, 2024 and 2029 elections for three scenarios. The three scenarios are Bafana Bafana, which is the story of uh, a bumbling along South Africa, a nation divided and Mandela magic. And I set out the economic and human development impacts for each scenario. There are chapters on trends in crime, violence and instability in South Africa and in South Africa in an inter-African and international context. A concluding chapter wraps up with uh, what I term meaningful radical economic transformation. How can South Africa take itself forward in a meaningful way? The three scenarios, Mandela Magic, is where the reformist grouping within the ANC triumph. That grouping is led by Cyril Ramaphosa at the moment. And the ANC stays in power until 2034, the timeline of the book. In Bafana Bafana, the ANC holds together. Uh, the tripartite alliance holds together. You have a compromised leadership and South Africa muddles along. In Nation Divided, the traditionalist triumph. The ANC sp um, splits early next year um, and South Africa heads down a populist pathway. Now, in summary, uh, the forecast to, to split the, divide the ANC into three broad factions. And I use these three factions to model the future of voting patterns in South Africa. The tr <coughs> traditionalist grouping is the rural black nationalist grouping within the ANC. These are socially conservative. They are dominated by Isizulu uh, speakers. They believe in a centralized state and redistributive policies and they are not really constitutionalists. So the key components of that traditionalist grouping within the ANC would be the Premier League, although that has split recently, the Youth League, the Women's League and others. And this faction, although this is a, a summary of a complex tent, is led by Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma. The reformers tradition, a grouping within the ANC, these are the social democrats, they are typically urban, supported by the growing cadre of born free voters, these are people also with jobs, they are a multi-ethnic grouping that believe in a mixed economy and inclusive economic growth and the key, the heart of that grouping is the Gauteng ANC and others and this is a grouping that generally is seen to be led by Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa. The large shift vote are those ANC or potential ANC voters who are unhappy with President Zuma. They are not voting or they uh, enter a protest vote, often voting for the EFF. And it includes former supporters of Thabo Mbeki and others. And what happens with that grouping will determine what happens with the ANC. Let's first look at the nation divided scenario. Uh, this is where the traditionalists triumph in December 2017, and as a result, the ANC splits early next year. Uh, president Zuma can remain president of South Africa to 2019, although obviously he ceases to be president of the ANC in December 2017, uh, but with uh, a traditionalist successor. In this scenario, probably Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma. As a result of that split, the ANC goes below 50% in the 2019 elections, it, has, uh, it gets between 40 to 44% of support at the 2019 elections, and it needs, therefore, an alliance with smaller parties or the EFF. Um, and in this scenario of nation divided, the ANC could lose power in 2014 to a DA-led coalition uh, who can uh, rule South Africa as from 2029. This is a scenario where fiscal populism uh, is evident. South Africa grows at 1.5% to 2034, uh, significantly below the uh, NDP target of 5.4% average growth. 
more aggressive black economic uh, policies, including land re redistribution, follow. And the economy is only about 30% larger by 2034 than it is today. That is quite miserable. South Africa embarks, despite a smaller economy, on a large nuclear uh, construction program that is uh, given to Rosatom from Russia. And we build six nuclear stations for energy that we actually, in fact, don't need. Um, South Africa's influence in the region declines. We opt for co-leadership in Africa and our ability to undertake peacekeeping and support declines. It's a polarized society, an unhappy South Africa. In the Bafana Bafana, um, most likely muddling along scenario, the ANC prioritizes unity above all else. President Zuma is recalled early in 2018, and the ANC under new leadership uh, gets about 53% in 2019, but it loses Gauteng, possibly to a DA-led coalition government. Um, which can rule Gauteng from 20, and, and a DA-led coalition can rule South Africa as from 2024 at national level. But a more likely outcome is that the ANC and an EFF alliance uh, govern South Africa in 2024. But certainly by 2029, in this scenario, uh, the DA probably emerges as the governing party in South Africa. Bafana Bafana is a scenario where the ANC talks left and walks right. South Africa grows at 2.3% to 2034. Uh, generally, South Africa is better managed. Um, the economy is about 50% larger by 2034 than it is in 2017, which again is not, not great shakes. We only build two nuclear stations in this scenario. We, uh, uh, the rest of our economic uh, electricity needs f uh, come from fracking in the Karua and import of natural gas from Mozambique. There's a continued decline in South Africa's leadership, but we are still a member of the BRICS and the G20, and we are a, a divided society. Uh, we remain as South Africans, we complain a lot. The next scenario, or the final scenario, is uh, Mandela magic. This is where the reformers triumph in December 2017. President Zuma is recalled early next year. The tripartite alliance breaks up. Labor, Communist Party go their own way, because this is a, a vision of a modernizing ANC, which uh, gets 59% in 2019. And an ANC-led coalition governs even Gauteng. And the ANC in this scenario governs to 2034. This is a social, an ANC that commits to social democracy and partnership with the private sector. South Africa grows at 3.3% to 2034 on average. But by 2034, we are growing at about 5% per year. There is a focus on private land uh, ownership in the former homelands, um, which replaces the communal land tenure that we see the current focus on. And the economy by 2034 is about 80% larger than it is by, uh, in 2017. Focus in energy is on renewables. We frack and we import gas from Mozambique. Uh, and South Africa maintains its leadership position in Africa. It also joins new groupings that emerge globally. And the country pulls together uh, in a common vision of where we want to go. So under the Bafana Bafana, most likely uh, muddling along scenario, uh, you see in front of you a forecast on the left-hand side of the percentage support that the ANC had in 2014 will get in the for terms of this forecast in 2019, 2024, and 2029. And then on the right-hand side, you see the seats in, the, in Parliament that the, ANC, that the various parties would get um, during the 2019 elections. So in 2019, forecast under this most likely Bafana Bafana scenario, where the ANC holds together and prioritizes unity above all else, the ANC gets about 53%. The DA, which does, does well under all the scenarios, gets about 28%. EFF gets about 12%, and the other parties about 7%. And you can see how the ANC support declines over time. Because un in the Bafana Bafana scenario, once the ANC loses Gauteng, it increasingly is a rural party. And urban areas where most of the voters and economic activity occurs falls to the Democratic Alliance. So. Um, on the right-hand side, the donut indicates the seats in Parliament uh, that the DA would get in 2019, 112 seats, ANC 212 seats, the EFF 48 seats. 
The slide that you see in front of you provides an overview of the economic growth uh, under these three scenarios. On the left-hand side, we look at percentage change in South Africa's economic growth rates under Mandela, Thabo Mbeki, and Zuma administration. And clearly, we can see the impact of the global recession and poor implementation and bad planning under President uh, Jacob Zuma. You see South Africa consistently under all th uh, is growing about 2% below the average for other upper middle income countries. South Africa is an upper middle income country, but our average growth rate since the Second World War has been 3.4%. And we continue to grow below the average of other upper middle income countries. Only in the Bafana Bafana best scenario does South Africa by about 2034 get to the growth rates of other upper middle income countries. So clearly much more needs to be done in South Africa to unlock our growth potential. The final chapter in the book is entitled Towards Meaningful Radical Economic Transformation, and it makes the argument that only jobs in the formal economy can significantly reduce inequality and poverty. Nothing else can help South Africa but jobs, growing the economy, and growing in particular the formal economy, including uh, expanding South Africa's manufacturing industry. This implies updating and implementing the National Development Plan. The NDP by 2017 is quite outdated. In Fate of the Nation, I update the population forecasts for South Africa, and amongst others, we find that South Africa would have uh, about 2 million more people by 2030 than was forecast by the NDP. And the uh, final chapter makes the argument that South Africa needs a strong developmental state. If you leave it to the private sector, South Africa will continue to become even more unequal than it is at the moment. A strong state to direct growth, but only the private sector can grow employment and the economy. South Africa is a, diverse, a relatively diversified economy that is highly integrated into the international economy. The private sector is the engine of growth. 80% of employment in South Africa is in the private sector. And we, government, if it wants to grow South Africa, it doesn't really have a choice. It's not an ideological statement. It is simply a statement of the nature of the South African economy, that government and private sector need to enter into a partnership to grow the economy and then translate that growth into, transforma into an inclusive growth strategy during which we, over time, progressively also change ownership patterns in our, in our society. South Africa... Is, has significant growth potential, but much more needs to be done if South Africa is to unlock its potential.